Hi, Rick Sandberg here. I'm a senior applications engineer for Hawkridge Systems in our Portland, Oregon office. In this blog, I'll talk a little bit about assembly mates and degrees of freedom in SOLIDWORKS. The assembly mate is one of the most basic commands in an assembly document. When you create an assembly mate, do you know how many degrees of freedom that mate removes? Well, let's first cover some basics. When you first drop a component into an assembly, it gets fixed in place, the little F in front of it. That means there are no mates and no mates that need to be solved. This is good because solving mates can be the most time-consuming part of an assembly rebuild. So every other component that we drop in will have six degrees of freedom. Right? It can move in X, Y, and Z for three, and it can rotate around X, Y, and Z for another three. As long as it has degrees of freedom, it has the dash in front of it. Our assembly mates are there to rob our components of their degrees of freedom. Most of us don't even think about um, the degrees of freedom and mates. And so what happens is we get redundant degrees of freedom removed. But not to worry, this isn't really a horrible situation and we don't really need to pay too much attention. But sometimes it can be important. When our assembly rebuilds become very slow or if we get assembly mate errors that we can't explain, then it's probably time to start looking into this. So let's just look at the, some basic um, coincident mates and the degrees of freedom removed. In this slide I have six different coincident mates from the vertex to face mate which removes just one degree of freedom to vertex to edge and edge to face mates which we each remove two degrees of freedom and then face-to-face -face and vertex-to-vertex -vertex mates, which each remove three degrees of freedom. And finally, an edge-to-edge -edge mate, which removes four degrees of freedom. So let's look at a practical example of doing some face-to-face -face mates and see what I mean by redundant um, removal of degrees of freedom. If I do a coincident mate between these two side faces of the block, it removes three degrees of freedom. Which degrees? Well, it can't move in X now, and it can't rotate around Y or Z. So let me do a second one to, let's say, the front faces of these two blocks. Another face-to-face -face mate means that it removed another three degrees of freedom. Three and three is six, right? So I should be fixed and no more degrees of freedom left? Well, not really because what happens is that those two face-to-face -face mates both are removing the rotation around Y as one of their degrees of freedom to remove. So that's a redundant one. And what's left is a motion or a translation in Y. And I'll have to do one more mate to resolve that. And what most of us will do is select these two faces and do another coincident mate. Great, that works fine, it's now fully constrained, but we've taken away nine degrees of freedom out of the six available, so that means we have three redundant ones. So, really bad situation? Should we avoid this? Well, not necessarily. Actually, SOLIDWORKS Help says that face-to-face -face mates are robust and predictable and, should, and are recommended. So if you're not seeing a bunch of mate errors that you can't explain or very slow assembly rebuild times, then you can do this without too much guilt. Much. But the real question is, should I fix this? Because that will remove all mates. So to do that, I would go into my mates and just delete out those mates that I did. And once I've done that, right click on the block and fix it. Now it's locked in place. No mates to solve. No mate errors to have on it. Great, right? But you have to be careful because it's not going to update with changes either. If I change a dimension on this block, go to 8 inches and rebuild it, ooh, now they're not next to each other anymore because it's fixed into place. So you have to determine whether it really makes sense for you to fix things or not. So ideally what we would create is just the right number of mates to take away exactly the number of degrees of freedom required. No more, no less with no redundant mates. In reality, this is usually more trouble than it's worth. Still, it's good to be aware of the redundancies that you might have. Let's take a look at some example cases. Here's a case where 
I have exactly six degrees of freedom removed from three different mates. And edge to edge takes away four degrees of freedom and then two face to vertex mates, coincident mates, will remove one degree of freedom each. Perfect. All right, well, let's look at another one. Here's one that's not quite perfect, but almost. I have a face-to-face, -face, a vertex-to-vertex, -vertex, and then a face-to-vertex. So three each for the first two and one extra one for the last one. One redundant one, three mates. Not too bad. Let's look at one more. This one is fully restrained, and I have an edge-to-edge, -edge, which takes away four, and a vertex-to-vertex, -vertex, which takes away three. One redundant degree of freedom removed, but only two mates. I kind of like this one the best. Two mates solves faster than three mates. So with only one redundant uh, degree of freedom removed, this one is probably my favorite. Okay, that's been a quick overview of assembly mates and degrees of freedom. Thanks for watching.